Hey guys, on this particular podcast, Podcast 10.5, it is the most important podcast of this unit. Yes. Because you will be using the information in this podcast to help you with your final project. A very substantial portion of your final project. One third of it. Yes. yes. So it is very important that you um, pay close attention. Mm -hmm. So I think we, it's a pretty long podcast, sadly, but uh, uh, that's what it's it is. It's very important. It's yes. very important. Okay, let's get into it. All right, here we go. Hey, um, what we're talking about is something called a titration. It's right. A titration is a type of an experiment. Mm -hmm. Before we talk about that, let's talk about some important definitions. Um, the first word is a standard solution. Mm -hmm. What is a standard solution? A standard solution is something that you know the exact concentration of. A solution whose concentration is accurately known. Yep. Okay, so it's a very accurate known amount of concentration. Concentration, Mr. Sims, what does that mean? Concentration is uh, how much stuff is dissolved in there. We usually measure that in molarity, which is be moles per liter. So let's say, for example, I have hydrochloric acid. I mm -hmm. put this in brackets. I put this in brackets because that means um, concentration. Mm -hmm. And then let's say I happen to know its concentration to be 0 0.0123 molar. So this would be a number, but I know this very accurately to the um, uh, to three significant digits or something like that. That would be a standard solution. I would right. probably have that in some kind of a container, some flask, mm -hmm. and it would be stoppered somewhere and labeled as you know point zero one two three molar HCl. Caution. Caution. Acid. Dangerous. Whatever. Yeah. Now the, the reason we need a standard solution when we do titrations is because a titration is an experiment to determine the concentration of, of a else. substance or something you, else about it. Not always concentration, right. but yeah. yeah. Oftentimes, yeah, yeah, concentration or something else. We're gonna find um, how much of um, the unknown we have, but we have to know something about something, something else. Yeah. In concentration in this case. So, um, what is a titration? Well, you can have let in that, that. Ms. Mr. Sims. You're like, it is an experiment. Or a uh, experiment. A uh, or an. An. Whatever. <laughs> an experiment um, that uses a burette. And we'll show you what one of those is here in just a minute. You can sort of use a burette. That's there. a particular device. This is actually a burette in the background. It's kind of hard to see um, in the big scheme, scheme of things. That uses a burette. Um, um, to mix um, solutions, solutions was unit nine, right? Mm -hmm. so that mixes solutions together in very accurate amounts, and um, then you can really get, learn lots of things. Should yeah. Say inaccurate amounts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's what a titration. And we'll is. demonstrate. I'll start to finish how. And one you're going to do so many titrations, you're going to be sick of them. You're going to be a pro. You're going to be a pro. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, in every titration, there's what's called the end point. Yep. And the end point is when you have equal quantities of both the thing that you yeah. are titrating and the thing you're titrating with. Sort of. It's more like equal stoichiometric ratios. Yeah. Well, yeah. So technically, it's when you have stoichiometric ratios. What does that mean? I'll tell you that. Yeah. Ratios of the two reactants. I don't think I've ever seen um, a titration that has more than two reactants. No. So okay. if I have a reaction A plus B makes C plus D, then I would have equal number of moles of A and B. The moles are the same. Now, if I've got um, a plus 2B makes C plus uh, D, then technically it's actually, if I have one mole of this, I will need two moles of this. Mm -hmm. That is said to be a stoichiometric ratio. Right. So it depends on the ratio. Ra it depends on the balanced equation. On the balanced yeah. equation, yeah. It'd be a fancy word. Stoichiometric yep. ratio is the balanced equation. Yep. All right, so it's important what the, and we have to figure out how we know that we have reached an endpoint too. Yep. And we'll talk about that. Well, speaking of talking about that, I think it's going to best uh, help if we actually show you a experiment. Mm -hmm. We're going to teach you how to do the titration experiment and actually then talk through some of the mathematics. Okay. Okay, we're going to demonstrate for you now how to actually conduct a titration experiment. Now, this is very, very important because you need to know how to do it for a lab, and you also are going to do this on your final project. So it's very important that you get all the details of what's happening here. So first, we're going to introduce you to the equipment that you're going to be using. Um, this is called a burette, this tall, skinny device here. You'll notice that it goes from zero at the top down to 50 at the bottom. So when you use this, um, you're always going to start with your solution up here at zero, and you're going to dispense it 
and then when you're done dispensing, you turn it off, and whatever the volume is, you just read it. You don't have to subtract it from 50 or anything like that, just whatever the number is, that's how much you've dispensed. Okay, you'll notice it's on a little stand here, it's called a burette stand, burette clamp, and you'll usually be dispensing this into an Erlenmeyer flask, you've used lots of these. Um, you'll also notice I have a piece of white paper underneath the reaction. Um, this is so you can see the color change take place because when we use the acid base indicators we have a color change and that tells us when we've reached our end point. Now, um, when we do titrations, typically, not always, but typically what you'll be doing in this class at least, your base is going to go into the burette. Okay, base burette. Now for today's titration, I'm going to use potassium hydroxide. The reason I'm going to use potassium hydroxide is that's the first thing I saw that was a base that was already made up. Um, I saw some sodium, but it was empty. So we're going to use potassium hydroxide. This potassium hydroxide is 0 0.20 molar. So this is our standard solution. We know the concentration of this solution. So that our standard base solution is going to go into our burette. Now, there, uh, when you do your lab, you're, you're going to not know what your concentration is of your base. You are actually going to have to determine the concentration by doing a titration. Okay? So you'll go, undergo the same process to standardize your base. Okay, so the base is going to go in our burette. Now, there's a few ways to get that in there. The easiest way is to either get a funnel or use a burette with a little flared top and just pour it in there. We'll do that here in just a minute. But before we do that, let's talk about some other ways that we're going to be dispensing our acid. Okay? Now sometimes the acid that you're going to use is going to come in a solid form. Now this is called potassium hydrogen phthalate. This is what you are going to use um, when you do these in lab to standardize your base. Okay? It's very simple to start with a solid acid because all you have to do is go over to your balance and you're just going to weigh it out. And I think at the lab we usually have you weigh out about 0.5 grams or so. So it's very simple to start with 0.5 grams of your acid. You now know exactly how many moles of your acid you started with. You do your titration and you can do some math. And guys, a recommendation when you're doing this is you should add it directly to the flask. Yes. Don't put it away but in transfer. Yeah, if you put the flask directly on and weigh it directly in there, you know you're not going to miss any of it. If you use the little weigh boat, some of it can like stick to it with some static electricity and you, you never get it accurately all in there. So yeah, weigh it directly into the flask. Very good. All right, now, other times you may be dispensing a liquid uh, acid. So today we're going to be using um, an aqueous acid. This is hydrochloric acid that's dissolved in water. I don't know the concentration of this. This is what we're going to determine the concentration of in our demonstration here. Now there's a few ways that you can get the acid, a, a very accurately measured quantity, into the flask. So the first and probably the best way is to use a volumetric pipette. Okay. So on a volumetric pipette, you'll suck it up in here to right on the line here. Okay? So when you'll notice this has a 20, what that means is that 20.00 milliliters will be dispensed if you start from the line and dispense all of it. Extremely accurate way to dispense, but it's kind of a pain because you have to pipette, and some people are not real great pipetters. Um, probably the best way might not be the most convenient way. Another way is you can simply get another burette. You can put your acid in another burette, dispense however many milliliters you want. Usually we do 20 to 25 milliliters and dispense it that way. The final way, if you absolutely have to, and this is not the best, not the most accurate way to do this, it'll introduce a considerable amount of error, is you can use a graduated cylinder. So you'll fill 20 to 25 milliliters of the acid that you're going to use. We don't want you to use that. We don't want you to do that. And, it's, and if you do that, you're going to want to use like a 25 milliliter graduated cylinder. You'll have less error in a device that has a volume close to that of which you're going to try to measure out. Don't use 100. Never use a beaker. Never use a flask. Never use whatever, you know, a soda bottle that you have lying around that you're going to try to pour it in there, okay? Those are not accurate ways to dispense liquids, okay? Use the pipette or the burette, and if you absolutely must, very accurately use the graduate cylinder, but we don't recommend that. Okay, so that's the equipment. Um, let me show you now how to get this set up. With the burette, the very first thing you need to do is you need to rinse the thing. Now you're going to rinse before you start and you're always going to rinse after you're done. If you leave base in the burettes, it starts to, basically it starts to warp the thing on the inside by uh, digging away at the glass and they're no longer accurate. So never leave an unclean, rinsed burette lying around. Okay, so the easiest way to do this is just to get a little bit of water. Now be careful. Up and down is open, across is closed. Open, closed. Okay, 
So you're always going to rinse it. And basically, you just need to put a few milliliters in, in there. You're just going to let the water run through a little bit. And you also need to just kind of twist it and twirl it like this. So you get the inside coated with the water. And you're going to let it run out. That's going to clean out anything that you have in there. Do that with, uh, with tap water and then also with distilled water. Okay? And once you've done that, you'll notice that there's still a little bit of water in here. Okay? You don't want that. So make sure that's all out. And we're also going to take steps to make sure that that's all gone as well by rinsing with the stuff we're going to put in there. So I'm going to be titrating with the potassium hydroxide. So I'm going to do just a quick little rinse with potassium hydroxide as well. So in the same fashion, just pour a couple milliliters in there. Into the bottom. Okay? 